thank you everyone for joining me. Uh, my name is McKeel Haggerty, and uh, I want to welcome you to a seminar that I have been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, um, this is not an entry level um, collecting seminar. There is nothing in here that we are going to talk about uh, that is sort of, um, sort of at the normal level of collecting for a lot of people. These are the cars that have absolutely defied gravity. And the 250 GTO was the weapon of choice for racing in 1962, 63, 64. They won everything. They were simply the best GT car out there. It's one of those rare cars that makes a bad driver look good. More important, it looks right. It's just a stunningly gorgeous car, um, which explains why the GTO is twice the price of the uh, 250 TR, which is more or less the same car underneath. I went to Europe in 72, and when I came back, I wanted to buy a GTO, but they jumped to $7,500, and so I waited for them to come down, which was <laughs> obviously not the best move. I can remember when the first one sold for a million, and to be very candid, it's not gonna stop. It is simply not gonna stop. Let's talk about Testarossa. So this is half the price. Half the price, but it's not half the car. It's, it was very successful, but not as successful. And it wasn't run by privateers, and there weren't as many made, so it's, um, the same type of car, but a bargain at half the price. What do you think about this 500 TRC? <laughs> Gorgeous car, uh, very user friendly. The problem with them is they're a four cylinder. In vintage racing, you're gonna have a great view of the back of the pack. Yeah, because you're just not gonna have the power. No, no, you're gonna finish last. <laughs> bad, bad news for $4 million, you finished dead last. Ferraris tend to lead the market. When the economy turns around, Ferraris turn around too. So what you're, ha what you're seeing is as, not necessarily in Europe, but in the US as the economy has recovered, uh, the market has certainly increased. And whether it's a Dino or a Daytona or a GTO, they have all gone up because they're all collectible. The Cobra Daytona Coupe and the 250 GTO were competing for the same title. And Shelby used a Cobra Roadster chassis and Enzo Ferrari made a new car with the same wheelbase and track. The Daytona Coupe is, I mean, they made six of them. They all exist. Uh, they almost didn't exist at one point where Shelby wanted them dropped off in the North Sea because he wanted to pay to ship them home from Europe. It would be quite interesting if Enzo Ferrari didn't protest the FIA and have the last race of the 64 season canceled. He was worried that these Daytona Coupes were going to eat the GTO's lunch. So he got the race killed and that was it for the Daytona Coupe. Now everybody complains that you know a big block gets really hot and they're uncomfortable to drive. I've got tens of thousands of miles of small block Cobras. They get just as hot as a 427. If you're in a Cobra, you're, you're going to melt your shoes. You know, people that own the cars are thinking they're going to tick up uh, if Carroll Shelby passes away. And the people buying the cars are thinking, I better buy one now before he passes away. Has it driven the market? No, I don't think so. I think it's uh, interesting, you know, like, well, if this happens, maybe, you know, they'll tick up. But I don't think it's going to have a, a great effect on it. Our, our view of this blue chip index is that again, these are cars that have sort of international appeal. They tend to they tend to be the type of cars that you know fit very well in lots of different types of collections. Uh, when we put together the uh, the index, we we basically thought about basically the automotive A list. Um, so we have two AC Cobras, a 289 uh, rack and pinion car, 427. Uh, Aston Martin DB5, uh, Bentley Continental Drophead, uh, uh, S1 Continental, BMW 507 Tucker, um, 48. Uh, a number of different cars on the list, uh, and of course the 300 SL, uh, Gullwing and Roadster. Anytime you can find a 300 SL, a Gullwing in any kind of condition, it's always worth big money, and it always draws a huge crowd. We see these cars as, as anywhere from kind of in the 700 to a million two range, um, and the better restored cars and the cars that were restored by the big names. The best way to think of the 507 is the competitor to the, uh, uh, to the 300 SL in many ways a two-door, uh, two two-passenger sport car, front engine. The market is expanding and keeps expanding. I think, you know, uh, we could go into some of the economic reasons why. Um, it's basically a pretty safe place to put money in a time that's not terribly inflationary. Um, you know, you can insure against loss. Um, you can actually use the cars. All right, with that, our time is up, and I want to thank everybody for spending 90 minutes with us. Please thank our panelists.